Hey, Board now back with you for another new television review and on this video I'm going to be returning to Children's Adventures of Sabrina and this is going to be the second episode of part 3. To give it its full title, as long winded as it is, it's Chewing, um, yeah, Chewing Adventures of Sabrina, Part 3, Episode 2, Chapter 22. It is called Drag Me to Hell, so another cool horror movie reference, Drag Me to Hell. Of course, a, a recent Sam Raimi film, or, oh, well, fairly recent, it's actually 10 years old now, but... There you have it, N another, another great title. Before I start this review, I have to just mention this because I've literally, just before re starting this recording, I have just seen the sad news of the passing of the legendary actor Kirk Douglas. 103, so a really great life. I remember a few years ago when he reached like the milestone of a hundred and sort of one of those funny things when an actor like that gets to that age where you kind of expect him maybe to pass at any time. Um, I remember like a few months back just seeing his name come up on Twitter and you, f you sort of fear the worst but Obviously, what a tremendous life and what a great career he had in the movie business. One of the few remaining actors from like the golden age of Hollywood and such such iconic roles like in Spartacus, which is you know pro probably is his most famous. But yeah, did it all in Hollywood and by and large just just seen it as a great 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 guy through and through. A real, real charming presence, and he will sadly be missed. Even though, obviously, it's it's no surprise someone of his age dying. I think it does leave a void, and it is very, very sad. And it will encourage me actually, because I, I don't think I've seen many of his films. But obviously, he had a long, long career with such varied roles. So it will actually encourage me to go and see some of his best. Um, well, just just some of his films in general. So R.I.P. to Kirk Douglas. Very, very sad to to hear about his passing tonight. I know it's random to mention it on this video when I'm talking about children adventures, but I I couldn't really let it pass without marking it. So something to say. I mean, I I know it's got nothing to do with this review, but if you want to mention anything about the sad passing of Kirk Douglas and your memories of him in this video in the comments then that's fine just go ahead uh, and another thing switch into a television sort of note because some more sad news although it's not actually fatal at this stage but the news that Shannon Doherty has her cancer has returned and from the reports I've heard, it's now at stage four. So that, so that is very troubling. That's a really advanced stage. And obviously, it was good news where she, when she was given the all clear originally. But now it's returned and is even worse. So, yeah, very sad to hear. You, you, you really feel for her, especially having, you know, recovered from the original um, cancer a couple of years ago I think it was so yeah y you can only keep your fingers crossed here I mean I think from what the little I know it's a long shot her recovering this time I know someone online kind of predicting that she'll be lucky if she's still around in 2021 but just awful news because she's only I'm not quite sure what age she is, but I know she's only in her 40s, something like that. So, really got my fingers crossed for Shannon Doherty and just someone who was just around on TV and someone who was a big part of my life growing up in terms of characters on TV and... I mean, Brenda Walsh, 90210, was one of my 
pretty much my first crush, you know, in terms of, I mean, Doherty as a celebrity, but the character of Brendan Walsh, and obviously grew up watching her in Charmed as well. And and although you, you sort of say, well, it's not the best sort of standard, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's still memories for me, and... And she, you know, I think she is. She has been a good actress anyway, even though some of her roles haven't maybe been the best to showcase that. But she's she's been in some good stuff. She was in Heather's as well, and one or two other things, more rats. But obviously, don't want to get too morbid at, at this stage. But yeah, it really sucks for her. Then this has come back so. Best of luck, my thoughts are with Shannon Doherty. Really weird way to start this video, but I just felt I had to mention those two things. So there you have it. So yeah, this is the second episode of part three of Sabrina. And it's another really, really good episode. Um, again, it it's, feels very focused and it feels like some really juicy character stuff happening with Sabrina, but it is all about it. It's very like focused on the mission of the episode, if you like. And, and I think that's when the show's at its best because then it doesn't really get bogged down in the more melodramatic like subplots. So in this episode, Sabrina has Nick in the basement of the academy which obviously sisters Shelda and um, Hilda don't know about they find out later on but they have she has him in the basement why she tries to figure out how to get Lucifer her father out and you can see her near the beginning of the episode um, trying to trying to to find a way to get him out and Lucifer sort of trick nearly tricks her into thinking that Nick has returned. And so then she goes off and asks for a spell transferal book from like um the spell shop. And that's that comes later in the episode. That arrives while she's out and that's how the sisters find out about it. But the, the main plot of the episode is then Madam Satan once again taking over Wardwell's body visits Sabrina and she, she says that she's having problems with the court in how the, um, the kings and various others who... who who just don't want to accept her and Sabrina as like the co sort of like leaders. And she says to Sabrina, they basically want you to transfer this, this soul to hell. And if you do that, that that will be, that will be enough for them to keep them at bay essentially. So we, we, we can re retain our powers there. So first of all, Sabrina is sent off to get this 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 older man, who again supposedly has sinned and is is so she she has to transfer his his soul to hell. But when Sabrina talks to him, she's she's convinced that he was really innocent and and so he doesn't deserve to go to hell. And it's quite a nice little scene of Sabrina using a head because what happens is they send like a limousine for him, which is meant to take him. But then there's like another limousine or a taxi or something like on the other side. And Sabrina actually directs him to that, that, that one. So to the wrong car. So he drives off in that and, and basically is is um, avoids going to hell. So so nice little scene and this obviously pisses everyone off in in the court in hell and Sabrina transported back and she she defends this because she um, says yeah 
he 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 hadn't sinned or he doesn't belong there. I decided that, and they're, they're just furious. And there's some good sort of hammy stuff going on in in this scene. Um, Gomez is is on great form. I just love her delivery of the lines, and she she spares Sabrina's blushes in a way because. She, she gives her another soul to chase. And this becomes like the main focus of the episode. So this this character... Um, I forget his first name, actually. I think it's Tony or something. But something called a Platt, who is something someone Sabrina has heard of. So he becomes her focus. And it turns out then he, he, he works at this ice cream, like selling ice creams and and this becomes very sinister because it allows him to target vulnerable children so when when sabrina shows up and she's got this this quite like <laughs> i'm not quite sure this this very sort of goofy looking henchman like he just looks like an executioner sort of thing but the the look of him comes off a bit cheesy but they give him they give Sabrina him to, to help her if she has any any aggro, basically. Um, but yeah, this guy Platt, he, he sells ice creams. And when Sabrina comes and tells her tells him who she is, he's like, oh, that's all right. I just make deals with them. I, um, I, I give them like a young, innocent soul. And... So they they just renew me for like ten more, uh, well seven more years, and this really shocks Sabrina because she she finds out that her father Lucifer was behind this. Then he made this deal with this guy. Um, so what basically happens is Platt tells Sabrina that he he has. Um, this this young girl Lucy Stokes locked away somewhere. So the kind of clutch of it is that he's using her as a bargaining chip to stay out of hell, to stay alive. But at the same time, if anything happens to him, then then something happens to her as well. So so Sabrina and the gang decide to get together to, to try and find her. Um, so again, you see, it's very sort of case-centered most of this, and it has a good, good sort of focus, and it, it throws up like this quite interesting like puzzle for Sabrina and, and them to sell. I will just mention actually because, of course, in the first episode of this this well season part, whatever you want to say, you had this this band with Harvey, Ros, and Theo. Um, I think it was called Fright, Fright or something. I saw that on, on the drum kit. Um, and they, of course, did buy Sharona in the first episode. In this this one, they, they go for Teenage Dirtbag by Weezer. Uh, not Weezer, is it? No, it's not. Of course it's not Weezer. I forget who sung that. Some Someone tell me. It's, I think it's a similar name to Weezer, but I remember it well from my, my youth, but... Yeah, it's not so hot though. I, I much prefer their cover of By Serona. And it becomes a running theme um, where Sabrina like interrupts them before they really get that far into some. It's like, it's becoming a trend now. Hey, I've got another mission for us to go off on. Um, and on the musical theme, you get like a cover of Tricky in, in this episode, um, the, the, the Beastie Boys classic, twice actually, because we see Sabrina and Ross um, like cheerleading. Of course, it's easy to forget that Sabrina is a cheerleader, but that's just part of them trying to leave it, lead a normal life as well, just to, as a cover. And it's even suggested that yeah, things are going quite well, that they do a nice little cheer to this song and that they're actually quite popular and like that the head cheerleader wants to hang out with them. But there's obviously this thing 
that they have to deal with pulling them back but you you get a couple of like performances of tricky in the episode so 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 that's pretty cool but anyway sabrina and ross find out about this girl lucy that they identify that she is the missing girl and this is where ross ross's power comes into play because she says well if we can get an item of lucy's I can touch it and I can probably locate her where she is. And so they go to the house um, and talk to the mother. And something, I, I wasn't quite sure what was happening when, when Roz was t um, um, touching the picture. I sort of missed that bit, but she, she got, got some sort of sense from it. And then the mother comes back and brings um, like this this sort of toy of Lucy's. I wasn't sure actually if if the mother was involved somehow. Like maybe she or maybe she'd been um, like blackmailed into giving up the child. I wasn't quite sure about that bit. But but anyway, Sabrina kind of uses like pressure. I think like mental pressure to 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 get the mother to agree to give up this thing and that's how they ultimately transfer lucy or 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 locate her and then what happens is sabrina acts a bit rass because she uses her powers to transport to this freezer which is where lucy is but the problem then is that that only works one way so she can't transport back and um then the plat plat shows up and shuts them in basically to the freezer and just leaves them um and as i said sabrina can't transport out but in the end they're saved by wardwell by lilith or well mad and satan in her body um and she lets them out because she traced Sabrina's like psychic sort of trail, if you like. So, uh, so whatever. It's it's a little convenient, but it, it's it's it what at least they gave a good enough reason. Um, so eventually, later on, at like this sort of performance of of the cheerleaders, they catch up with with the creepy guy Platt because he's selling ice cream at this thing and he has one how of a of 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 a sticky ending basically S -s some really good effects once again in this episode and that's kind kind of the pay payoff so so he gets his justice and for now order is like restored and Sabrina has a couple of kick-ass lines towards the end of the episode. She says, um, Hal's under new management, management mine. And she also says, Hal needs a makeover. So, so brilliant use of, of Hal and in that metaphor. So great stuff once again, really. So a, a couple other things going on. I... So far, we haven't seen that much of Halda and Zelda. And I think maybe that they'll come more into it. I think they've been a bit wasted so far in in this new season. But anyway, of course, Zelda is, is running the, black, the school of black arts now. And lucifer sets sets off a spell basically because he hears them it, it's him being sort of controlled by the black lord but he hears them you know with their class upstairs because she takes and he so he sets off like this this evil bug again quite nice effect and they start infecting the students and Z zelda gets controlled by lord blackwood um so so that causes all, all sorts of chaos but they figure this out and they 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 they, they sort of tell the students to go by candlelight to, to try and find him um but what happens eventually is that ambrose and um prudence they've located blackwood 
in in Loch Ness, of course, in Scotland. That that's sort of where we left them off last episode, and we get some more of their romance, which which I couldn't couldn't give a shit about, to be honest. But anyway, there's this this quite weird sort of scene where um, Blackwood, Father Blackwood, like. Well, he, he does summon, like, the Loch Ness Monster, who, which, to be honest, looks more like the um, the creature from the Black Lagoon. But, but anyway, he raises him, and he has a couple of sacrifices for him. And the sacrifices turn out to be Blackwood's children, his own flesh and blood. But Prudence and Ambrose are there on the spot, and they save the two children. And Prudence, obviously her whole thing is that she just wants to kill her father. She just wants him dead and out of the way. But Ambrose convinces him or convinces her that then they still might need him. So then later on, they come back to the academy. And this is in the scene where... Zelda confronts Sabrina and some great acting again by Miranda Otter and they say well what are we going to do this this is highly dangerous you bring in Lucifer back Lucifer slash Nick back but how, how are we going to get a soul and then Ambrose Prudence arrives with Blackwood so they, they put him in the cell and that the, that's like the transfer of souls so nick returns essentially at the end we see him with sabrina but yeah yeah again I, i'm not so much into the ambrose prudent stuff but the scene the scene in loch ness was was pretty good like hammy fun because richard coyle is is again on wonderful delightful form him and his scary beard is is pretty fantastic stuff so so there you have it that's that's pretty much the episode now now the cliffhanger at the end is that you have um Roz and Harvey in the woods and Harvey suddenly is drawn to like this this carnival this random carnival which is just randomly in the woods and we hear some like demonic voice as we cut to the end of the episode so yeah pre- pretty nice ending i'm assuming it's something to do with the people riding in on the carriages at the end of the first episode so intriguing like hook for the next one and i'm enjoying this, this show once again Again, it, it, it does go to some quite dark places at times, but the, there's a good mix of, like, hammy fun and, yeah, some good dialogue, some decent enough characters. I, I think Shipka is, is really good at Sabrina, as Sabrina. I think she really carries it, and she makes you care about her and the people around her, so... Again, r- r- one or two, you know, weaker moments, but really good stuff again. So that's episode two of part three of Chill and Adventures of Sabrina. If you've seen this episode, then let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be back with more Sabrina reviews soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye.